Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be sketching and painting a scene from Grindelwald, Switzerland. I received some requests to draw more landscapes or sceneries and I had this picture which I took from the first floor of this building looking out at these beautiful mountains through this window. And so I thought, let's try a sketch that has nature as the focus, but still some urban elements as well, such as um, these houses and these, this um, interesting building. Um, there's also these lambs and railings. And for the flowers in the foreground, I planned to make it sort of surround the window a little bit more. If you are interested in downloading this picture as a reference, the link is down in the video description below, along with links to all the materials that I use. So these paints here are Holbein and Van Gogh watercolors. So first I'm going to start with the color mixing, because I'm going to start with a layer of watercolor first, and sort of block in all the basic shapes and colors. The first color is a light blue for the sky, which is made out of compost blue mixed with cerulean blue. The second color is ultramarine deep plus burnt sienna and viridian for the mountains which are further away. Here I am testing the colors out in my sketchbook. The third color that I'm mixing is a mixture of sap green and yellow ochre. For the fourth color, I'm just using pure burnt sienna. The last color is for the flowers, and it's a mixture of quinacridone rose plus French ultramarine. So I first mixed these two colors together, a red and a blue, to make a purple. And I wasn't really happy with this purple color because um, I tested it out on paper and I felt that it was too strong and too cold and it didn't match with the other colors. So after that, I decided to add some warmth with Perlin Red. So these three paints are actually from Daniel Smith. And here I am testing it out again and I'm much, much happier with that. The color of this um, purple red is much more what I was um, aiming for. Now I'm wetting the paper in the center with a clean brush and I'm making the surface really, making sure that it's really shiny and glossy and we are going to be doing a wet on wet technique for this first layer. So I'm using a block of watercolor paper, which will really hold down that paper even when it's very wet like this. So I'm starting with the sky first, a very, very light wash of blue. And at the same time, I'm also leaving some white space for the clouds. It's a very simple sky, it's not um, too eye-catching, I just want a little bit of blue. Mm -hmm. 
Next, we have those snowy mountains of the Alps, far off in the distance. So I'm just dabbing some of that dark blue-green color that we mixed before. And I'm leaving lots of white space for the snow. As you can see, we are painting, starting with the things that are furthest away and slowly, slowly progressing forward, getting nearer to us. So next I'm using the green to paint the mountain slopes. So gee, these are just very rough shapes and I'm not trying to be super accurate. It's just um, trying to block in where I think all these shapes and colors are. Because the surface is wet and the paint keeps spreading as we paint, we never know exactly what the result will be when we do this. And to me, that is part of the fun. You know, sometimes watercolor will surprise you and it can be a good or bad surprise but if you're having fun and learning something at the same time to me it doesn't really matter you just have to keep painting now i'm adding some brighter green for the trees at the foot of the mountains and these are just very, very loose strokes and I'm trying not to fuss with it too much and you do have to be quite fast when you're painting this first layer because um, you want to try to finish before the water on the paper dries completely. And next, I am adding some burnt sienna for the buildings in the village and some of the trees too. Some of them are, some of the trees are a little bit brownish. And I'm just dabbing paint here and there. And that paint is spreading gradually, as you can see. So you really never know exactly what you're going to get. And that's part of the fun. And now I'm coming forward and painting that gray road and I'm using a, mix a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine deep. So it's kind of a brownish gray. So I'm trying not to paint it too dark. I don't want it to overpower the other areas, especially the mountain area. So. You may have already noticed that the left side of this sketch is a little bit darker than the right side. So I'm trying to get the right side, um, the colors a little bit brighter, or I'm leaving more white space for light. And finally, the nearest to us, I'm adding some plants and flowers. These will sort of surround that window and I'm starting with a light green and then later on I'm adding some, I will add some darker green for those um, darker leaves. So the way to darken that um, mix is to either you can add ultramarine, you can add um, a blue or you can add a little bit of red to sort of dull and darken that green down. And the last color for this layer is the purple red and because the paint spreads just one or two strokes is enough for one flower 
and I'm making some of them bigger and some of them smaller. Just watching the paint spread is so satisfying. After that, I decided to fiddle with the greens a little bit, and I think I did fiddle with it too much, which is not really advisable when the paint has almost dried, like now. So I'm creating some of these hard edges. So here I'm using a clean, moist brush to soften some of those hard edges that I created. So the first layer of watercolor is done. And I usually leave this to dry for about 5 minutes or so before starting with the ink outlines. So you can also use a blow dryer to speed up the drying process. Today I'm using my Lamy Safari fountain pen with a medium nib and water resistant ink from Noodlers. So as I mentioned before, you can find the materials that I use in the description down below. So first, even though we have a rough idea of where everything is now, it's still good to reevaluate where the horizon line is before starting your outlines. So now I'm starting with the left side of this mountain. And I am trying to follow the shape of that mountain um, as best as I can using these dotted lines or broken lines. And I think it's always safer to do dotted lines first and then connect them later on if you need to. And if you like doing these continuous lines, I think it is a bit more risky, but you can do it if you are very familiar with the shape of the subject. So this mountain in the center has quite a characteristic shape. And it is one of the famous mountains. It is called the Eiger. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. And I'm going to try and get that shape recognizable. But the rest of the sketch is going to be a sort of loose interpretation. The main focal point, the main focus of the sketch is the mountain. So that will be more detailed. And the rest of the sketch, for example, um, the buildings, and the road, they will be loose, they will be looser and less detailed. As I mentioned before, I'm also going to change the flower arrangement, probably make it so the flowers surround the window a little more. After I'm done with the basic outlines of the mountains, I added some texture with short, these short lines to indicate ridges and slopes. 
and there are a lot of ridges and and slopes and a lot of texture. So adding texture can take up a lot of time. So at this stage, we're trying not to get too carried away. Um, just keeping in mind the big picture first, and adding just a little bit of texture to indicate um, that this is a mountain. And then later on, we'll come in and add more detail. I'm also now blocking in the shape, the general shape of the clumps of trees at the bottom of the mountains. This was not a quick sketch, and in fact, I'm taking my own sweet time with this. I didn't do this sketch in one sitting, I did it in little pockets of free time, just enjoying the process with no rush to finish. So this video is mostly in real time, but I will be speeding up some parts which are repetitive. For example, later I will be doing a lot of textures and little details which take a lot of time. And I think my videos are getting longer and longer. So I will just shorten this video a little bit so it's more manageable length. Finally, we have arrived in the village and now since we are closer to these trees, so we have more defined shapes for the trees and I'm also drawing some lines for the roofs and buildings. No details at all because this is not the main focus of our sketch, just really loose shapes and lines. So this line of buildings is slightly below the center of this paper and they are curving closer to us as we go to the right side. So this tree looks bigger and has a little bit more detail. And we also have this more prominent building on the right side, which I think could do with a little bit more detail. And the color of this is also, the color of this building will also be a nice break from all that green color.
So here I am visualizing where I want the railing for this balcony to be and it's going to be right below the village. So it was a little nerve-wracking to draw a straight line right across the page like that and I had no expectations for it to be straight at all because um, we like things crooked around here. Next, I'm dividing up the railing into sections, like in the picture. And I'm only going to incu include two lamps for this. So I find it a little bit difficult to find reference photos that I like online and I often scroll for hours looking for inspiration. So taking your own photos wherever you go, wherever you are, as inspiration for your own art is a great practice and it also teaches me to be more aware wherever I go because I am actively looking for references that I like and which inspire me for new art. So if you have time, you can sketch right there on site, but time is precious and sometimes it even costs you money. So you have to pay to sit somewhere or you get, um, maybe you get lost sketching and you sketch for too long and maybe you miss your train or your bus and that costs money. So yeah, so it's not plausible to um, have everyone sketch on site all the time. And I think sketching at home is actually really, really comfortable for me. I have everything um, that I need and I have a comfortable seat and I can take a break anytime and I don't have to rush. So th those are the pros of working from home, from a photo. But the, the thing about planner or um, going out to sketch, urban sketching, uh, is that you sort of get a different vibe because you smell the air, you see things that you don't see in pictures like photos don't do the real place justice like really this photo that i took of this place it really does not do um this place justice it it is beautiful amazingly beautiful in person and so yeah that is um, something that you can't um, experience if you just follow a, a photo that you found online. Um, not that it is a bad thing. Um, it's just that there are um, different experiences for when you sketch at home and for when you sketch on location. But I personally, I personally get gain a lot of inspiration from real life and from seeing things in like with my own eyes as opposed to seeing beautiful pictures online. I see the beautiful pictures, a lot of them, but then I don't feel the inspiration. Only some of the, the, the millions of photos, only a few inspire me and I don't know why so yeah do let me know if you have any experiences with sketching maybe in Switzerland I did not have time to do it 
So I have a lot of pictures. I didn't spend a lot of time、um, sketching. I did not have time.、Um, time is very precious. So yeah, do let me know if you have any experiences with sketching outside, or if you only sketch at home. As you can see, I started to sketch the flowers in the foreground now, and I am drawing a few of these flowers with more detail. But mainly, I am being quite loose with them, and I don't want the flowers to steal the show. They are not the main focus, and their color is going to make them stand out already. So I don't want it to be too distracting for this sketch. So just be really loose with them. I don't want the flowers、um, to be too big as well, and I don't want it to be too compact. So they are quite loosely dispersed. And one thing, another thing to take note of, if you aren't familiar with flowers, is that each flower is facing a different direction, and they are all the same flower. But no two of these flowers has the the exact same shape because they are either、um, facing different directions, or the some of them are further away and some of them are closer to you. So things that are closer are bigger. So try to get small and big、um, flowers as well. So after I was done with the flowers, I started to add some loose leaves, and to be honest, it did take quite some time because、um, this is the foreground, and I don't want it to be too.、Uh, I did want it to have some detail, so I did spend quite some time on this.
As you can see, I added some chairs on the balcony and completed the railing. And now I'm adding a bit of detail to the middle ground as well. I added some stairs and I'm not going to, I'm going to omit those vehicles just because it's, um, it looks, it will look really complicated for me. So I'm just going to omit whatever I want to omit, but you can add vehicles cars and, and um, buses if you like. So before we get into too much detail, I am adding the last element in this sketch, which is the awning.
So we're almost done with the ink outlines. I'm just adding some detail to the mountains. And this sketch has a lot of elements. And trying to find the right balance of everything is a little bit tricky. But um, I think for me, it is important not to overcrowd the sketch. So I am constantly like... Um, stopping and um, moving my hand away like what I did just here um, I'm stopping moving my hand away to look at the big picture and um, to find um, the right balance between all the elements in this sketch All right, so finally I'm done with the outlines. And now we're going to start painting with watercolor again. So first I'm starting with those mountains in the distance. I'm adding some dark blue lines using a size four brush. And I'm basically using the same colors as before. So now I am applying a very light wash of grey, especially on the left side of these mountains, which should be a tad bit darker. Here I'm using a quarter inch filbert brush for the big mountain and this is very handy to create texture that looks like ridges of the mountain and sometimes like what I'm doing right here I add some burnt sienna or burnt umber to the grey as well.
So as you can see, I made the mountains which are further off more blurry and hazy compared to the mountain in the center, which has more defined ridges and shadows and shapes and has more contrast. Right here, I am using a mixture of sap green and ultramarine deep to paint in the trees at the, on the slopes of the mountain. And I'm leaving these little gaps so that I can come in later and add some burnt sienna.
So here I am painting the trees which are closer to us and inside the village using a light green which is a mix of sap green and yellow ochre and I'm using a lot of paint so that it does not dry too fast and then before it dries I add a dot of darker green on the base of these trees and I, ju I just let that paint spread into the light green. Here I am using burnt sienna to paint the houses and the roofs of some houses and some of the trees as well. So whilst I am painting that, I wanted to talk a little bit about finding inspiration. So I talked about taking your own pictures and being more aware of the things that are around you. And another thing that inspires me is definitely watching other artists and studying other artists' works, either on YouTube or on Instagram. Or Facebook and I love going to workshops if I can and meeting other people who love art that is one of the most inspiring experiences and um, if you can you can also um, attend urban sketching sessions if you are um, near to an urban sketcher group maybe you can join them and then when you see other people who are um, of all walks of life sketching and painting outside that is very inspirational for me and if not just going out finding a new space maybe um, I think that offers you a glimpse into the lives of other people and for me, that is inspirational and it gives me um, more perspective as well. So for someone who is a creator, um, you need to have input in order to have output. You can't just keep producing good quality content without input. So personally for me i study people that i admire i learn from videos i read and i go out and then i come back with more energy and i create so personally i find it really inspiring when i have a balance between consuming and creating So right now I am painting with a dark brown which is a mixture of burnt umber and ultramarine deep.
So now again we have come back to the flowers and I am painting a darker shade of that red purple and I wasn't really um, happy with how purple it looked so after that I added more pyrrolin red and then I um, painted with just pure pyrrolin red for some of the flowers. Alright, now I am adding some shadows to the road on the left side, right there. And after that, I will be painting in the shadows for the mountains as well. And finally, I will be painting that awning on the top, which I haven't added color to yet at all.
For the awning, I'm incorporating some of that purple from the flowers into the gray mix that I've been using for most of this sketch. And um, so the colors are French Ultramarine plus Quinacridon Rose and also Burnt Sienna and um, Ultramarine Deep, which is from Holbein. And the... Um, French Ultramarine is from Daniel Smith. So at this point, I felt that this piece needed some yellow and so I added some new gamboge to the, that building on the right side as well as all over the sketch just to give it that yellow glow.
All right, so after adding more shadows and some finishing touches, we are basically done. So for this piece, I decided not to do the paint splatters, which I tend to like to do these days, but I might add that in later when I feel like it needs it. So I am quite happy with how this one turned out. It is sort of like my little window into a beautiful oasis somewhere that I can escape to when I need to. If you found this video helpful to you, do remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.